Welcome to the second show on BrandRepublic.tv. My name's Philip Smith and we're going to be talking about green marketing, sports sponsorship and we're going to be watching a little bit of this. Putting cars and green issues together is not an obvious move. After all, what does the high-octane sport of F1 racing have to do with ethical marketing? To help me talk about this, I'm delighted to welcome David Butler, who is Marketing Director of Honda F1 Racing, and Stuart Dybel, Head of Sport at 19, the Entertainment Management Agency. Welcome to the BrandRepublic.tv studio. Nice to be here. It is an odd mix, isn't it? I mean, Stuart, how does motorsport and green marketing fit together? Well, there's, there's, there's obviously an apparent contradiction there. And um, like many things in life, it's about perception and reality. And if you look at the reality of, uh, of Formula One, then actually it's perceived as this kind of like gas guzzling sport. But actually, uh, its footprint, um, CO2 footprint, is actually less than some sports like soccer or things like that that people would perceive as greener. Mm. And actually, the, the, the thing about Formula One is that all the emissions from the cars driving around the track and also the air transport in getting the cars to the track was offset from way back into the, the late 90s before anybody was talking about offsetting. So the actual footprint of Formula One is neutralized. But I think the really key thing, though, is that Formula One, through its very advanced technology, and it's a laboratory, if you like, for the car industry, Formula One can actually really contribute to environmental solutions. Whereas if you look at most other sports, you know, ping golf clubs, they might be able to get Tiger Woods to drive it an extra 20 meters, but they can do absolutely nothing to help the environmental problems that the world faces. Whereas Formula One, with its very fast pace of technology development, can really, you know, pioneer technologies which can then go onto the road cars of the future and can really make a difference. So Formula One itself as a sport is not as bad as people would necessarily think. If you then look at what Honda's doing, Honda's one of the greenest car companies in the world, it has a sincere desire to be a corporate citizen. And so when Honda was looking at how it presented and marketed its Formula One team, working with uh, Simon Fuller at 19, we'd have decided to focus um, the whole thing on raising environmental awareness. We launched that last year, mm -hmm. and this year we're developing that into a positive marketing program, which is really about investing in projects around the world to make the world a better place. And, and David, I mean, the, the, the talk was that Honda F1 broke the mould with the Earth Dreams idea last year. In a nutshell, what is it and what, what do brands get from their association? The irony is that I was involved in a, in a conference talking about sport when I wasn't involved with Honda Formula One and this issue came up and it was very, very topical. Um, the Earth car generated a lot of awareness last year. Uh, I like the controversy, I like the juxtaposition that uh, the Earth car achieved. Um, and when you tail that back to the sincerity and the integrity of the Honda organization, it's a huge amount of corporate social responsibility work that it does, the way that the Honda Formula One organization structures itself and manages itself. Remember, this is not just a racing team. This is a, a factory plant with 700 staff members, um, which has engaged uh, the sport's first environmental manager mm. um, with a lot of um, carbon-limiting legislation that we've introduced to the factory as a process. So it's been a very exciting journey. Um, the Earth Car last year was essentially an awareness platform, and uh, the My Earth Dream program uh, was very successful. It generated over 70,000 subscribers to the MyEarthDream.com website, generating almost $200,000 in revenue, which was passed forward along with another million dollars in revenue provided by Honda Racing and its team partners to a series of environmental programs which have benefited from that program. Last year was about awareness. This year, the program has evolved in a fast evolution process into action. And this is a long-term, ongoing, sincere program by the Honda Racing Formula One team and its partners to generate a global, earth dream, positive marketing program that is both brand and content. The brand is exciting. Mm -hmm. Honda Racing is giving its car over to the creation of a positive marketing program. The core of this program sits with a social responsibility program which will be delivering funds to environmental projects around the world. Right. And you talk about excitement, talk about action. Now's a good time to have a look at the car. This is what it's about.
And that was Honda F1's new racing car, as driven by Jensen Button and Rubens Barrichello. Of course, it does pose the question, we've got a rapidly changing media and marketing landscape at the moment. Where does sports marketing and sponsorship now fit into that? Sports marketing and sponsorship is, is a hugely dynamic industry. I remember when I started in the early 90s, you would go into boardrooms and you would meet with the chief executive and always next to him would be the, or her, would be the um, head of advertising. And sponsorship was this new infant um, that was really a threat to the advertising agencies because it was something very new and dynamic. Advertising had its evaluation models. Sponsorship was far more complex than that. Sponsorship was about hearts and minds. And the 90s and the, the early parts of the, this decade have seen huge growth within sports marketing and sponsorship as being a really engaging way of brands to showcase their values, to associate themselves with projects and products. Um, where we are now is that uh, sponsorship is now moving. Sports sponsorship is moving from being interruptive, um, brand-oriented, put a sticker on things, put billboards up, to something far more complex and subtle, connectivity, engaging people, bringing people into your environment, um, going from brand association to credit. And within this, the whole evolution of sports sponsorship is a very exciting area. Um, and part of this now is, is not just within sport, but within society as a whole, looking beyond what we're doing, looking to the society that exists around us. And there's no reason why sport by being a hugely engaging universal language, can't reach out to a global audience and give positive messages as well as straight brand association messages. And that's what the Earth Dreams program is about. It's about using a hugely powerful billboard, which has a brand value of anywhere between 70 and 100 million dollars in brand exposure through television and media. Using that platform to tell a very powerful, engaging message, and then allowing people to get involved with that message, and that message creating impetus and revenues mm -hmm. and action, which can be offset through supporting environmental and social projects, which bring that whole message to life. So for us, it's a hugely engaging and connecting world, and. W F1 is about in innovation, it's about technology, pushing the boundaries. And as marketing people, we're going to be doing exactly the same through the Earth Dreams program. Of course. And earlier I spoke to Stuart Codling, who is the deputy editor of F1 Racing magazine, and he talked to me about the importance of, sp of sponsorship to the sport itself. Well, I think historically speaking, sponsorship has been very important to Formula One. If you look at the 1950s and 1960s, it was an era of not professional drivers, but of well-to-do people, people who were independently wealthy, both as competitors and uh, drivers, really. You know, the team bosses were independently wealthy men who bought cars from constructors and went racing just for the uh, share of the prize money, really. And then in the 1960s, tobacco sponsorship came in, and that ushered in an era of professionalisation in terms of the way the teams operated, in terms of the way the drivers operated. And uh, it, it, it sort of came to be that they stopped racing every weekend, really, and they focused entirely on Formula One. And as that progressed, we saw uh, a, another era, a much more technological era, begin in Formula One. And I think all that investment basically came from sponsorship. Of course, sport cuts both ways. It's about winning and losing. But I guess that must also be a big challenge for the brands involved. What, do, what does Honda itself get from its involvement in F1 racing as a brand? We know about its iconic images, we know about the whole um, marketing push that Honda does, but what does it get from F1? Honda's a very philosophical organisation. Um, Sashiro Honda, the founder of the Honda organisation, was quoted as saying, you cannot lead unless you carry the torch. You can follow others, you can stumble, you, can fo you, you, you won't stumble, you won't fall, but you will not lead. And I think that's a very important part of, of the Honda philosophy, to lead. There are two key statements that ring in my mind when I think about Honda. The first is that Honda as an organisation, as a company, is a company that aims to be a company that society wants to exist, which I think is a, is a hugely inspirational um, ambition. And secondly... Uh, integral to Honda's DNA is its passion for racing. If you go to, to the museums in, in uh, Japan and see the, the Honda um, manufacturers' um, racing cars and motorbikes, you'll see everything from Ayrton Senna to McDoohan. This is a company engaged and passionate about racing. It's what defines the organisation. Its engineers are flooded through the F1 programme, through the bike programme, bringing that technology, that expertise and that teamwork back to Honda. So Honda is about racing, it's about being a company that society wants to exist, and 
coming together uniquely through the F1 program, we are the embodiment of racing technology. Mm -hmm. And the Earthstream program does sit very neatly within the Honda philosophy, and we've married the two together. Sure. Stuart, do you think consumers understand that connection? I think they do. I mean, I think one of the other things that, to me, you know, building on what David said that, that Honda stands for is it's, it's never been afraid to challenge convention. It's never been, you know, afraid to challenge technological barriers. You know, Honda will be the first car company in the world to, to launch a fuel cell vehicle, you know, mm -hmm. uh, this year. And all that comes out of the tailpipe is water. You know, it was the first company to launch a hybrid. And so it has this challenging spirit, and I think that that is very much part of the whole Honda DNA. And again, it's very much behind this whole uh, program that we're launching here. You know, to have a Formula One team raise environmental awareness to try and help the world through social issues. You know, that is not normal. Um, that is not what the average run-of-the-mill company does. But Honda has this challenging spirit. It's a pioneer. It's a leader. And I think that's why we've got a lot of other partners who want to come with us on this journey. And just key to this, if I can conclude, um, mm. the key word to all of this is integrity. And um, the Earth Dreams program has enormous integrity within the Honda organization, within the Honda racing team. Everything from stepping into our offices and your body kinetic, setting off the, the lighting, to um, an environmental program within the factory, to Honda's huge and ongoing, it's been going on for decades, um, care for the society around it and its CSR programs. Integrity is essential, especially when you're moving into this area. Um, and social responsibility is itself now an emerging industry within marketing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even have a name. Corporate social responsibility, social marketing, cause-related marketing. But, but you can't bluff it. You can't bluff it. Um, and it's absolutely essential that it sits very, very much within the very core being of the organization and of the people in the organization. And that's why we are bold and brave about what we're doing, because it's something that sits within our consciousness. And the Earth Dream program is the embodiment of that. It's positive marketing. We've even created the genre for it because we didn't feel that it sat anywhere else. It's positive marketing. It's putting a brand into the uh, brand mix and inviting partners to join it. Well, I like that. We can end on a positive note then. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for here. But do keep your eyes peeled. Do look at brandrepublic.tv for what we've got coming next. Do let us know what you have to say about the show at brandrepublic.com forward slash on TV. In the meantime, I do want to thank both Stuart and David for coming in and sharing their thoughts with us. I do particularly want to thank our partners at the IPA and our sponsors at Thinkbox. And I want to thank you very much for listening and watching it.